Yo, Elliot, I've always been a typical nice guy. Nowadays, when I try to be more assertive, I'm sometimes a bit aggressive. I never get mad, start swearing, or lose my frame. I simply don't behave the way I want to, but the way I'm used to. I react out of emotions and not just and not out of rationality. I started to work on that and after reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, the book you mentioned several times as well, I was inspired by his explanation of the choice between stimulus and reaction. I'm trying to change myself by studying how to be more manly and also I'm trying to use visualization to see myself acting differently in various situations. In reality, I often come back to my default reactions. I lack control, especially in tense situations, and it's very hard to find that choice which Covey talked about. I guess I'm too often in the magician archetype. I read a lot and study all the time, but it's hard for me to put it into action. Being able to decide on my reaction to any situation is my main self-development goal. How to make those theoretical ideas a part of myself, how to embody them, practice them, and eventually master them. Well, you're well on your way, and having that understanding that you can create a space between a stimulus and your response is the key. The fact that you know that you are in control of how you respond is super important. Now, I have to draw attention to the internal versus the external response. The work for you right now is to modulate your external response. The thing you actually do, right? It's not so easy and it takes a lot of time to really begin to resolve that gut reaction that we have to things. And so for the most part, you know, you say that you never get mad, you're not swearing, you don't lose your frame, but you say, I simply don't behave the way I want to, but the way I'm used to. Well, by the fact that you're not getting out of pocket, right? You're not off the chain. You're not losing your frame. You are in an external way, right? And so the way we interact with the world is how we are perceived and it's going to impact the reflection that we get, right? It's gonna reflect the reaction or response that we get from other people. So it's very important to work from the outside in in this regard, right? It's easier to modulate your behavior than it is to modulate your feelings because feelings are unconscious, right? Feelings are spontaneous. They are, um, their reactions, right? They happen, they happen e without us even thinking about it, right? Something happens and boom, you feel it on the inside. Ugh, that, that just, it just stabs your heart or sometimes you know, I'll feel it in my belly or I'll feel it in my solar plexus, like, uh, like I stop, right? Um, that, is, that is super primal, right? Because if you just think about us as a developmental man, right? Like the very first thing that we do under the threat of Danger is, right? They say freeze, right? You got that. You got your 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 uh, these 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 typical uh, primal responses, right? Fight, right? Right? And that would be you if you were externally becoming mad and losing your frame. Fight, right? Flight, which means, right? I'm gonna I'm I'm backing away, right? And 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 I'm afraid. I feel guilty. I feel ashamed, right? That's how it shows up today. But really, both of those proceed from an initial freeze. And that freeze happens always physiologically. In fact, all of these responses are physiological. They happen in your body typically through the, the, the pattern interrupt of your breathing pattern. You interrupt your breathing pattern. That's how you know what's happening with your feelings. Feelings are always physical, right? So this is where we're going with it right now. We'll talk a little bit about what you're doing on the outside, but I think you're doing fine. I think you're doing fine. Let's, just, let's dig deeper and, just, and talk about what's happening on the inside because that's really where you're probably getting most hung up, right? And so feelings also lead to thoughts. So now you're judging yourself. You're having feelings which are gut reactions, the primal responses, and then you're judging yourself based on it. That loop, we got we to gotta break that loop. And so we're going to break that loop by breaking it down and giving yourself some grace. 
about how it's happening, why it's happening, and that it's okay. You're just gonna give yourself some time. So that first, that, that initial reaction that's unconscious is a form of a survival reflex, right? It's a, it's a, it's a primal survival reflex that gets your body primed to do something when there's a threat. Now, we no longer live in a time where we're being chased by tigers or bears, right? Well, we got bears around here. Or, uh, you know, a, a, you, there might not be a warring tribe, you know, waiting to, to take you out, right? So we don't actually have real threats, right? Most of our threats are mental. They're contrived. They're made up. Uh, they're, they're a slow burn of a threat, meaning you're thinking about what could happen, what might happen, what they're thinking, what they're, you know, uh, how they're responding, right? They're all, they, they're all social. They're more like, they're more mental. They're all more made up. They're not legitimate threats. But your physiology doesn't know that. Your body doesn't know that. So your body reacts as if a tiger is chasing you, right? So you've got that initial reaction. This is where Stephen Covey's advice becomes very helpful. There's that initial jolt to the physiological. There's that initial, mm, right? Sometimes I feel my shoulders hike up. Uh, very often it will always, nine times out of ten, it'll be a, a, a breaking up of the breathing pattern. You're going to stop your breathing, right? The minute you check yourself, the minute you catch yourself, with a stifled breath, right? That's usually the first reaction. The minute you catch yourself with a stifled breath, the very first thing you do is recognize that and breathe. Scan your body. Scan your body. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can do this, what makes it better, easier for you. Somebody says something, right? And you're needing to be assertive, right? But you got that aggressive gut reaction in your body. The very first thing you gotta do is Relax the breathing, right? Because it's going to, it's going to stifle. And then scan your body for where, where else, where other places in your body where there's that tension arises, right? It could be in your inner tube and it could be in your muscular system. Inner tube is your solar plexus, your throat, and your pelvic floor. You got three diaphragms there, right? I've spoken about this. The inner tube from your mouth, right? This is the most primal part of our body, right? They say that in utero, we grow as a digestive system first and then everything grows out of that. All of our organs come out of this sort of notochord of sorts, right? That's why they say like um, worms, worms are very primal in their, in their development because they're a tube, they're just a tube. Our most primal, the most primal parts of us are our inner tube, right? The mouth and the butthole. Just think about it. Like you can't, you can survive without arms. You can survive without legs, right? But you can't survive without a mouth and a butthole. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where most of the very first primal jolts happen in that, in that primal inner tube, right? So you'll feel, I always feel it here in my pelvic floor. I feel it right here. I stop my breathing and I'm like, ugh, I could feel it instantly. And I had to have a tendency to hold that area a lot. And then I can soften it or the pelvic floor. You ever hear someone call another person a tight ass, right? A tight ass means that they've got that pelvic floor pulled up. It's always pulled up out of fear, right? They're anxious, they're fear, they're wanting to control. So they're sort of a tight ass. That, the, the pelvic floor is that other um, diaphragm, diaphragm. So you check your inner tube and then the throat. You know, you were talking the other day about people who choke. You choke because the, the diaphragm in your throat, you have a diaphragm in your throat. It, it tightens up. So the very first reaction is going to be in one of those three, those, one of those three diaphragms of the inner tube. This is fascinating stuff, right? So rea gut reaction, that's why they call it gut, right? It's all here, gut, gut reaction, boom. Stephen Covey advice, create a space. How do you create a space? Breathe. What does breathing instantly do? It relaxes those three diaphragms. It relaxes those three diaphragms. If those diaphragms are tense, you got to understand, based on polyvagal theory, right? And this is Stephen Porges. The brain through the vagus nerve is tied into those three um, diaphragms, particularly the heart and the solar plexus. So if there's tension in any of those diaphragms, the brain starts to get dumb, 
right? Because now it's fight or flight. You go to your reptilian brain, right? That may be part of it. I'm probably not getting this all biologically correct. But the whole thing is that there's a jolt in the inner tube and then the brain starts to figure out what do I need to do? Do I need to lash out? Do I need to run, right? Some people... They, get, they feel a sense of guilt. And if you're not careful, you're going to go down that route. They have a sense of guilt. What is guilt? Guilt and shame, they're not the same, but they're similar in that they're a judgment against the impulses of the body. That's what I was looking for before, impulse. It's impulsive. A judgment against the impulses of the body. So is there, as soon as there's an inner tube impulse, people, mostly masochists, will then judge that and they'll say to themselves, oh, why am I feeling this way? Oh, I shouldn't feel this way. And so they, it's a guilt, shame is a conceptual emotion. Did you know that? Let's stick with one of them. Shame. Shame, so I don't have to keep saying both. Shame is a conceptual emotion. It's not a real emotion. Did you know you have conceptual emotions and real emotions? A real emotion is movement in the body. So when you feel that, and they don't even need to have names, but it's just an emotion. It's a emotion. You don't have to say what it is, right? Because even the words are conceptual. It's a movement in my, in my gut, right? It's a movement in my gut. It doesn't mean anything until you give it meaning. And shame is a matter of judging it negatively. Like, oh, I shouldn't feel that way, right? But the fact is that you do, and having a concept about what you should and shouldn't feel is useless because what is, is. I feel that there. So when we create space, it's not just breathing so that we can release that tension in the inner tube. It's a mental freeing. You got to mentally free yourself from what just happened in your body. Otherwise, like I said, with that vagus nerve that's associated with the brain, you'll, go, you'll, you'll feel something in your body and you go straight up to your head, right? You go straight up to your head and then what will happen is you'll start replaying old images about past experiences that puts you in a state of mind that will make you aggressive or angry rather than assertive, right? And this all happens like that, right? So you get that feeling and then you think, very unconsciously, you think back at a time when someone did the same thing to you and made very bad things happen in your life, right? I remember when that happened to me last time. I'm not gonna let that happen, right? People who are control freaks, right? They're the people who are like, they remember subconsciously something that happened like this in the past and they're like, I'm not going to let this happen again. No way. And so they get in and they start getting aggressive. They start trying to mess with things from a very ungrounded, unconscious place. Not very helpful at all. So what you have to do is, number one, step number one, notice the feeling, release the feeling. Remember, feeling is just feeling. It's not, you didn't get to the head yet. People don't get this right. People think that because they're in their heads that they're feeling. The brain has no feelings. There's no feelings in your thoughts. They're concepts. You're making it up. Feeling. Feeling is literal. Okay, I got that feeling. Resolve the feeling. Reduce the feeling. Breathe into the feeling, right? Don't judge the feeling. Don't name the feeling. Don't, uh, don't have to... Um, justify the feeling, whatever. Stay out of your head. Then you can have a clear mind because you're not judging it. You're not thinking about it. You're not uh, even judging the other person, right? Because now that person becomes a threat. The, the body, you got to clear the body first and then the mind stays free. And then from that place and only from that place of pure stillness, we talk about this a lot in the King Transformation program. We talk about all action proceeds, all true action, right action proceeds what? From a place of stillness. All activity proceeds out of a place of fear. Fear is feeling. Fear is unrest. All activity proceeds out of fear. So when you're being quote unquote aggressive, you're acting out of fear, right? Fear is the catch all for all negative emotion, even sadness. Fear is a catch all because really there's only two things. When it really boils down to it, right? We really have, because just look at the world. We live in, we live in a, a, a TikTok world, right? Not necessarily TikTok, right? 
But TikTok meaning like it's it's sort of dualistic, right? Like you have you have two of everything, two eyes, two ears, two nose, two nostrils, right? There's love and there's fear. And so if you're not acting out of love, you're acting out of fear. Now there be me the various different manifestations of that fear, but it's one or the other, right? So now you recognize, wow, I had a gut, I had a gut fear, I had a gut reaction, a gut fear, right? I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay clear of judging it because then I get the concept and then it becomes a circle jerk. Now I ask myself, what is the most loving response that I can support, that I can produce right now? How would love respond in this situation? And I don't want you to listen the same way that we gotta like talk about fear in its various manifestations and so that we don't get caught up in you know, pop culture definitions. Don't get caught up in pop culture definitions of love either. To allow somebody to get away with something that needs to be addressed comes out of fear. That's not love. True love oftentimes require that you admonish someone. So wait a second, that's wrong. All right? And out of charity, out of love for you, I can't let you get away with that wrong thing, right? Out of my love for you, I can't sit back here and allow you to get away with this wrong thing. And people will get offended because they think that you're coming from a fearful place while addressing them for this, right? So they become defensive right away. I had to talk to one of my children the other day, and she was, uh, she was doing something that I didn't like, right? We were talking, and she was interrupting. I had to stop, it and I had to let her know. I said, listen... Out of love for you, I'm going to say this right now, because I wanted to, to prepare her not to take this offensively. I was like, I need to say this to you, not because you're interrupting what's going on right now. That's an issue in itself, and you know that that's wrong. But out of love for you, because you need to learn how to have self-control, I would like for you to master this for yourself, because it's going to help you later on in life. That's love. So now I, then I proceeded to admonish her, right? Rebuke, one of, one of these words, right? Rebuke her and just say, listen, uh, you can't do that. And this is why, blah, 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 blah. But it's from a loving place. So you get two places to come from, but you cannot choose if you don't stop. And I know you understand all of this. That's why I don't even know why you're asking me. I know you understand all this because we've spoken about this and you've read Stephen Covey who, who produces this concept very artfully. You say, in reality, I come back to my default reactions. Good, let's talk about this because now it's about what you're doing, right? We spoke about noticing the feeling and being disentangled with the feeling not judging the feeling, being detached from the feeling, no thoughts, no thought, feeling, no thought, space, clean slate, right? You got, and that's, that's an act of the will. Both of these things are act of the will, right? And if you are of the habit of creating BS, creating stuff up in your head, that just takes practice. It just takes practice. It just takes practice. The more you do it, the more you commit to doing it, the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. Now, you say, I come back to my default reactions. Your default reactions never ceased because they're unconscious and they'll be there for a little while. He says, I lack control, especially in tense situations where I find it hard to choose which Covey talked about. This is where you, you seem to be struggling now. The default reactions are going to be the default reactions and you have no control over them right now. Don't try to. Don't try to have control over the default reactions, the gut reactions. They're unconscious. Notice them, like I said, create space from them, and then like Morpheus in the Matrix, right? Blue pill or red pill? Which one are you going to take? Blue pill is I'm going to act out of this emotion right now. There's this emotion. I'm going to conceptualize the emotion, make up a story about this emotion, and then I'm going to act out of it, blue pill. Red pill is how does love respond in this situation? 
how can I operate out of love in this situation? And that's what assertiveness is. The difference between aggression and assertiveness is assertiveness is comes from a place of love, self-love and charity for other, right? And love for God. Charity, anger, blue pill, red pill. I read a lot and study all the time. It's hard for me to put this into action. Being able to decide on my reaction in any situation is my main self-development goal. I will leave you with this. If you don't know what to do, don't do anything at all. You're better off doing nothing than trying to figure out what to do. You may not even have the capacity just yet to be able to speak free from emotional entanglement. I understand because sometimes that happens with me too. I'll, I'll pause and it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring love to this situation, but because my body is still frazzled, I'll, and, you know, I'll talk loud and then my kids will take it, you know, they'll take it the wrong way. It's like, no, I'm, I love you right now and I'm saying this because I love you. But because I still feel this stuff, it's coming out loud. It's coming out aggressive, right? Even though that's not, I'm not trying to be aggressive. It's just my body. What can I do? Don't say anything. Don't do anything. Leave it as is, whatever the situation is. And then either come back to it later, right? Right? Here, this is important too. This is real important. Allow yourself to be misunderstood for a little while. Allow yourself to be thought of as wrong for a little while, right? Because a lot of times we want to squash that right away, right? Somebody says something or does something and you want to justify yourself right away. That's, a, that's Again, that's out of fear and that's the ego wanting to protect itself. Let yourself be misunderstood for a moment. It's okay. Because you can come back later and you can rectify that. Let that person walk away thinking that they won. Or let that person, whatever it is, let them walk away with that wrong thinking or that wrong attitude about it that you know that you need to correct, but in the moment you're just not, you can't do it. Let that person go say, oh, one of the best, one of the best phrases to sort of just seal that for yourself and for that person, knowing that you're this moment you're remaining neutral, but you'll come back and address it, is just this. Is that so? Hmm. And I'm not saying fake it, but when I do that, because I, I just did it, I catch myself with the wheels turning. And I think when a person sees that in you, when, it, when you go, is that so? When you turn your head, hmm. And I, this is what I do. I go, hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I walk away. That means I'm going to think that one through and I'm going to get back to you on that. Is that so? Hmm. That's what I'll do sometimes too. That hmm, is almost like, really? <laughs> really? You think so? Hmm. Okay. Right? I do that kind of unconsciously now. Like that. I made that a practice many years ago, right? I'll just go, is that so? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'll even giggle like I did giggle right like you you know i know you wrong but i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you be with that for a moment <laughs> okay you think so all right i don't have to defend myself i don't have to squash it i don't have to have, have justice in the moment be okay with that that's a part of stephen covey's advice to create space which means i don't actually have to respond right now that's self-mastery self-control, that's a very dominant position in the situation to say, no, I am not going to respond right now. That oftentimes leaves that person hanging and that, that hanging make, puts you in charge because now the ball's in your court and they, they are wanting you to kick that ball back. You ever get that? Like people, they want, they're trying to egg you on, right? They're trying to draw you into something. Sometimes the most dominant thing that you could do, the most alpha male thing you could do is take that ball and say, huh, I'll be back. 
whoa, whoa, where are you going with the ball? I thought well, I was playing with you. He's like, no, you're not playing with me right now. You ain't going to get me to play with you right now. <laughs> ain't in mood to play, buddy. Right? Because if I throw this ball at you, it's going to take your head off. So let me take this ball. I'll be right. I'll be back. And then it's a beautiful thing when you take that much space. Here's something I learned over my years. You don't even have to come back with a verbal response. You can write something, right? This, because what happens is when you respond to somebody through, say, now, I, I remember doing this when I was younger, right? I figured it out with my dad. And I wrote him letters, right? Because I couldn't talk to my dad because I got too emotional. And my dad's a fiery guy too, so we would just shout, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't end well. So I was like, the only way my dad's going to hear me is if I make him sit down and read something. So I write letters. And so, but I do that now sometimes with my children. I'll realize I can't really talk to you right now about this for both of our sakes. <laughs> I'm going to leave this alone, but then I've gone, I've, I've typed letters, to my children, I've written text messages to my children, and that way it's okay. There's no you, there's no emotions here because you're not here, I'm not here, and now you have to take your time and read my thought out response, not reaction, to what's going on there. How to embody these practices and eventually master them? Everything I said right there, and I'm happy you used the word embody. Embody means go to the body first. Recognize what's happening in the body. No judgment. Pause, create space, take your time, respond only when you're ready. That's it, dude. That's it. That's all. I think you know all this, right? I'm happy I was able to spell it out for you guys. Uh, but it takes practice. It just takes practice. It takes practice. And the only way you're going to be free to practice this is if you don't judge yourself, right? If you don't if you don't uh, beat yourself up for being a nice guy or for being too aggressive. That's that seesaw, uh, unresourceful seesaw effect. We don't want that, we want neutral. Stay neutral, have no judgments about yourself. Hope that helps, dude, done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war as well as how it's affecting your health your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.